respect to our application for the development. Uh, this is, again, something that's been, I think as you're familiar with, under review of MEPA initially. Initial approval, obviously, we are in the infancy stage with respect to an overall development and overall uh, planning stages with respect to, A, the site, as well as the proposal for our gas station slash convenience store. Uh, we do feel it was most appropriate to bring this initially to the selectman's attention with respect to the select board's attention, pardon me, with respect to the beer and wine license because obviously it is uh, a factor with respect to our development of the site. As you can see in the attached plan proposal, we have at least 1,500 of square feet uh, proposed for the beer and wine section. Obviously, uh, we are to go to the planning first and have a contingency to have an extra or vacant 1,500 square feet, I didn't think it was in the best interest. And so I think today we're here to certainly answer any questions or concerns as the overall development, but I think it may be a little premature to put the cart before the horse, although we do have some, uh, I think we have some information to sh share, and Sir Bullock would like to at this point. I'm actually thinking you are putting the cart before the horse, asking okay. for the liquor license before any plans are in action. I understand that. And I, I think, obviously, that there's no question that we are, are not anticipating that there may be conditions, that there may be uh, questions or certainly additional information may be requested uh, by either the select board or any of the, the agencies or government offices. But we did feel that, as you know, there is one available. We felt it was appropriate to initially apply for this and perhaps work in coordination. I know Mr. Bullock has spoken uh, to Mr. Dwyer, I believe, as well as other individuals with respect to the town. And we are really looking forward. I think everyone can agree that we'd like to develop that site. We certainly would because it's looked like crap ever since the day it was bought. That site is despicable. When you drive into town and you see it's not hasn't been mowed, the buildings are disrepair. It's a tremendous eyesore, and people have been disappointed since the day it was bought. They were so excited when they heard about the buying of that building and looking forward to the development, and absolutely nothing, not even a lawnmower has been out there. And I can't tell you how disappointed I am with that. So maybe we, you can talk more about your development. So Absolutely. I appreciate your frustration. I think really, as you know, there's a, there's a time limit with respect to, to beer and wine license. That if, if it's to be issued, uh, there would be a, a data to be issued, and obviously that's really going to... Uh, put Pride's feet to the fire, quite frankly, with respect to the development. But yeah, with respect to the, the overall the development, I, I respectfully defer to Mr. Bolvik. So could we have a little more about the development? Because that is an issue that people are concerned about. Uh, I'm, I'm Bob Bolvik, um, currently advisor to Pride. And I have a full set of plans for you. And I'd like to first comment, Mr. Devine, on, on your thoughts. Uh, it does happen all the time that we buy a property. People think that the next day we're going to develop it. And it doesn't always work out that way what, with other plans that we may have. Um, and along the way, of course, the economy did take a slump and we couldn't get financing. Uh, and in fact, as you know, Congress uh, extended all permits for a four-year period of time because we were not the only ones that couldn't get financing for anything and uh, they extended throughout the country it was an automatic extension of all permits for four years because they understood that. As for mowing it, we don't mow it every week, but we do keep it mowed the first 20 feet from the street uh, when it gets up to about, and I will say knee high, no question about that, um, and we consider it a field but not necessarily someone's front lawn. But uh, we're, we're anxious to get going on it now also, and this would be a project for Given the time it usually takes to get permits now, and I can tell you we have five of them in various towns right now in the application stage, and we would love to see that your town is quicker, but I, I can tell you we're averaging about a year for a permit to build a gas station now from beginning to end. When did you buy that property, sir? I don't recall. Okay. Six was, years ago? It was ago? several years. Um, I didn't think it was six years. If you say it is six years, then it's six years. That's a guess. But, but as I say, just because we buy it doesn't mean we're going to develop it right away. You know, we have other so plans in the works, etc. What are your plans? So, we did. We have gone through the entire MEPA process, and that is done now. We have MEPA approval, um, and that that alone takes two years, as you know. So, Jim, if you would decide enough to hold it up. This is what the, the building itself will look like. And but I'm sure you want to see the, the site plan first. So here we are, and all these assume that we're standing on Route 9 looking at the property. 
So this is the corner of Bay Road. That's the proposed facility. We end up with a one point, basically three acre parcel that's available behind it where we have not been able to get a tenant. And then a larger 2.8 acre parcel over here where we have not been able to get a tenant. We've talked to a lot of different people over the years and the economy has not been there. Now the last six months, let's say this year, the economy has clearly turned around. And once we level all this, we expect and put a for a lease sign up, we expect that maybe someone will come along. But, um, you know, we, we can't make people make a development if they don't want to join us. Anyway, this is how it would work. This is how it would work. <clears throat> Just stiffen it up a little bit. Uh, the uh, canopy would be across the front. There would be a separate diesel canopy here because we sell diesel at all pride stations. This would be the building. And the reason we're here, as you say, putting the cart before the horse, is that if we were to uh, be granted a beer and wine license, we would make the building this size. If we're not, we'll make a smaller building. But the last thing we want is to put a big building up and then and just have a lot of vacant space. So that's you're exactly right, you know, the chicken or the egg, but we've got to start somewhere, and, and we think this might be it. As Jim said, uh, there, can be, there will be times on it. It will be expired a certain uh, amount of time if we don't use it, I'm sure, because otherwise it will be considered a pocket license and you'll take it away. So um, you have the right, if, if we don't do it, we'll lose it, and we understand that. Okay, so that would be it. There would be one main entrance here, which is, as I said, we've been through the MEPA process, and MEPA wanted one here to come into a main development, so this would be like a shopping area. And so there wouldn't be a, a multiple driveways. They would allow us one here in the beginning, just, to t just that. But then this would be the primary main entrance to the shopping area. And then from there, you can enter the, the gas station store go to the back parcel or come into this parcel. They've allowed one exit on Old Bay and one exit on Bay Road. So you, you've talked about going through the MEPA process. Yeah. Um, during that process, have you talked to the town about whether they were willing to give you access to those roads in those places? Have you talked to the state yet about your state access permit? State access is done. All right, so you have Mass DOT is done. MEPA and Mass DOT are done. So you haven't come to the town to talk to us about access to the, our roads? Uh, that's, that's the very same uh, issue as uh, the beer and wine, what comes first. You know, um, I can tell you this, I dealt with a town in Connecticut just today, and they said, don't come before us, the planning board there said, don't come before us until you have Connecticut DOT approval. So they wanted DOT first. And, and also, we use uh, VHB, Vanessa Hank and Bruce Lynn, as our design engineers. They chose the state, the DOT, uh, Mass DOT, and uh, BEEP of process first. That is just the way, they, they made that call, not, not you us. You did do the hardest part first, I'll agree to that. Um, so, and my other question, um, so who are you look, talking to for other tenants? Have you been... I mean, uh, we were looking, what we hope to get in here would be some other retail and um, a restaurant, either front or back or whatever mix. Um, neither one stepped up, not yet at least. I think once it's cleared and there's a big for lease sign on it and they see a major development going here in the corner, I think then things will happen. That's usually what happens. Right. Could um, you talk a little bit about the site prep? You, you're saying... You Raising everything and putting a, a large leasing for lease sign up. That's correct. What would the timing of that be? We can do that anytime. As soon as we get some permits to get this thing going, we're more than happy to do that. And and um, we're prepared to do it. We have the financing now. Everything's all set. So you have your meeting. And you permit. can make that a condition. You know, we're, we're willing to so allow you to ahead make. Of me, but I'm betting that that was coming. <laughs> no, and that's from, no, well, it's happened okay. before, yeah. we're perfectly used to it, and uh, we live with it. I'm fine with that. Once we get before you and select board and planning and all that, then we follow all the processes, we understand. Any other questions from board members? No, I'd like What's going to happen to the Pride Station at the other end of town? Nothing. We're, we're it's going to continue to exist. Oh, yes. 
Is that in That's in Hadley? That's in Hadley. That's in Hadley. It's right in the middle line. Down by Stop and Shop. Yeah, that came out with the subway on the subway left. Right. Yes. So actually, it's a big building. It's true. very comfortable when you walk in. Thank you. So this is the, uh, would you mind? Yeah. Um, well, no, no, just slide over a little yeah. bit. Oh. So uh, does the staff any com have any comments for the board on this? I, I certainly will reiterate what Mr. Devine said. It has been very frustrating work, working with Mr. Boldock throughout the years trying to get this site cleaned up. I have called him personally many times telling him our frustration that we had vagrants in there. We had police on site, up to six officers at a time with three cruisers. And those buildings are still open. They come and they do some few nails here and there to close things up and they're opening in the next week. Um, as far as mowing, I've asked them many, many times just to get some of that stuff down. It's so overgrown now that the police are having a very hard time even being able to um, look at those buildings to see if there's anybody in them. It has been extremely frustrating. And I think that even though he bought it, he still could have maintained it to some extent. It is. It is a, it is an eyesore. Okay. And I, I, I w it would have been nice if he had done some some cleaning up before he came before this board. Okay. Oh, I'll let you talk again. Chief? Um, I mean, we have, I've had the same frustration as Tim. However, I can say that um, I know that the fire department has been allowed to do some training in one of the facilities, so we tried buttoning it up. But there is an ongoing issue with trying to keep folks from breaking in there. So car, uh, plywood goes up, it gets broken down again. I've actually been in investigating the buildings too and have found folks living up there so uh, I understand Tim has been dealing with it a lot longer than I have as far as the pride stores um, I mean we've had issues in the past with with the pride stores however those have been corrected with the state fire marshal's office uh, I don't have any recent violations with that um, I think we've we've come to an agreement on how that needs to happen so um, like I said we do use one of the sites as a training site, but that doesn't negate the fact that it looks awful over there with all the overgrowth. I would agree 100% with Mr. Devine. Um, not so much, I understand the concern about what the property looks like. Um, obviously my, my main concern is the public safety aspect of it. We have had people breaking into those buildings. Um, we've, we have made arrests in those areas. We've had to search the buildings. They are unsafe. Um, so I was very pleased to hear that something was going to happen on the property. Um, you know, some type of development and the buildings would come down and it would look nicer and we would be minus one of the issues that, that we've had to deal with over the last five or six years or however long uh, Mr. Bullock has, has owned the property. So, you know, I'm certainly in favor of something like this. My only concern as far as the development goes uh, with the, the liquor license is the rest of the property. Um, I'm not. Make, I don't want to make any assumptions as to you know loitering and people buying beer and alcohol and hanging out in the parking lots. But well, let's be honest. If the property, if the rest of the property is allowed to remain similar to the way it looks right now, um, with an establishment with alcohol on it, uh, you know we're, we're we're almost asking for for similar problems. So uh, I would be concerned and uh, would like to hear, you know, I, I, I appreciated hearing that the prop, the rest of the property would be, would be flattened, all those buildings taken down, so I'm glad to hear that as well. Does the select board have any questions for yeah, staff? I, yeah, I agree with all these comments, and in the past years we have had, I know for a fact we've had trouble with fire permits and fire issues with your other station, uh, hazardous materials, being dumped in a water table over there at that other property, which is a hazardous waste site. Uh, we've had, uh, wait a minute, I, I, you may think I'm assuming, but it sounds like if we don't give you a liquor license over here for beer and wine, you're not going to clean the property up? Is this what I'm assuming? Or? No, absolutely not. Okay. We're not 
We'll let you. Oh, I thought it was a question. We'll just go ahead and you have any other? No, no, I, I'll, I'll let him answer it. All right. Uh, the answer is absolutely not. This is not. This is certainly not a, a quid pro quo. Uh, these two are absolutely disconnected. And I'd like to make a couple comments. The first is when we bought the properties, and we didn't buy them all at once. It was over, I don't know, maybe a year and a half time. They were all in the shape they're in now, uh, dilapidated, vacant, uh, semi-boarded up, and terribly overgrown. And so whatever problems that site has had, um, frankly, I'm hearing some of this stuff. Yes, I've heard when you're going to clean it up, but in terms of serious problems with vagrants and being asked to do this and do that and not doing it, uh, you know, maybe somebody else in the office is getting these calls, but I'm not any, as anywhere aware of the seriousness of the problem as I, I just heard. So, um, and it was that way when we bought it. Now, in terms of conditions on it, what, okay. what I... Okay, I think you answered this question. Fine. Select. Just follow up for staff. Well, do you have, another, you have a question for staff? Yeah. Right. Um, sounds like one condition that people are certainly in favor of would be to um, expeditiously get rid of the overgrowth and the buildings, so that should take care of the breaking and entering if there's nothing to break and enter into, right? Um, are there any other conditions that, based on your uh, experience with this property, that you would also like to see? My, my only question is I'm, I'm unsure that the Getty gas station in the front, that you don't own that? We don't own that. So uh, that we, stays? We tried to buy that. Um, they had an exorbitant price on what is not even a buildable lot now. We gave them a very fair offer. We dealt with them for months, and we weren't getting anywhere. Um, and then someone else did come along and buy it. And um, as Carl was quoted in the paper as saying, I think, you know, it's, you can't do much with that right now but paint it because it's too small. And so we suspect that might be for sale again, and maybe the price will be a little more reasonable, and we would be more than happy to buy it and get rid of it. And that was kind of part of what we were all waiting for also. Because um, when we do this, now that's a nice word to us. <laughs> yeah. I, so I, we agree. To answer your question, Molly, that, that was, that's my main yeah, concern. That's where we stand. Public safety goes. I, I would hope that really someday, not, yeah, I'm really not someday pushing the buildings. I'm, I'm pushing a growth because of the situation and the cost to the police and the fire and the building inspector that, that's been going on since you bought the property, like Mr. Devine had said. Yeah, well, I'm, let me tell you, I am not aware of any cost to the town because of this. I've been, I've been told that it was visual, and we keep the front of it mowed for that reason, but I am not aware of any cost for the town for having to go in there and deal with any problems on our property. All right, okay. So, I, I guess I would just like to see that if this is going to progress to where it is, that I would, I would like to see those buildings flattened before winter, before vagrants and people no are, problem with that. are looking for... Uh, places have to stay and stuff because you know as it gets colder people are you know we have tons of homeless people in this area and uh, I would like to see it all flat before winter and then um, it would solve half of the problem I think for the condition would be a time limit. Yeah. I have I have no problem with that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'd, I'd Thank like you to do. also at some point maybe meet with you privacy and, and maybe you give me some specifics about what you say about uh, hazardous waste and all. Because I'm wondering if you're thinking of some other site, but I don't know of any violations for hazardous waste there. Uh, your property None. is a contaminated site or by stop and shops. So let's uh, let's keep it on the. Oh, 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 let's keep it. All right. Let's keep it on the property we're on, please. All right, Ms. Keene, you had another question. Just one other uh, thought. To the extent, and this is getting well ahead of ourselves, but um, to the extent that the Getty property, for lack of a better term. Um, would become available for resale. I mean, it's obvious that that is the gateway to the town. It's the first thing we see when they come over the Gorge Bridge. Um, would you be willing to engage in conversation with the town as to what that corner um, might properly look like as a welcoming for the town? We, in fact, had uh, wanted to be able to bring that to you and provide that to you as some mm -hmm. sort of a welcome sign and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that was one of our goals. One of the things that held us up for a while. 
would it still be your goal? Sure. Because it's no good to anybody. If it's so small and tiny, it's no good to anybody. So we couldn't do anything with it anyway except to clean it up. Mm -hmm. So for us, it would have been a significant investment for just 100% aesthetics. Any other questions from the board? No, that's it. <coughs> okay. Is there anybody in the audience who has a question or a comment? Paul Benjamin. Uh, I live at 35 Newton Lane, and I own Hadley mm -hmm. Crossing. Um, I have myself called your office to ask the lawns get mowed, the buildings get patrolled. And I have called the police. No, I have talk. called the police numerous times when there are people over there. The cops have to go and work the property, find who's there. Uh, sometimes it's teenagers, sometimes it's vagrants. Um, you know, I, I, I can't believe, I, I mean, I, I think it's ironic that your company's called Pride and you would leave that property looking the way it is. It's been a detriment to the neighborhood. Uh, you know, I, I had property that was in limbo during the entire 2008 to now recession, and we kept it mowed, both on our property in Northampton and our property in Hadley. We continued to keep it looking kempt for the neighbors so that people would look at it and not see a dump. And I can't understand why your company allowed this to happen when you were getting calls from the police department. You know, I would call the police department, and you know what they'd say? There's nothing we can do. The guy won't even post no trespassing signs here. Sir, so, so I, no, oh, oh, I have excuse never... Excuse me. Excuse me. So do you have anything so, else to say to the no, board? No, I guess my that? only question is, you know, we're talking the cart before the horse here. So you're setting a precedent, if you do this, that a developer can come in and say, gee, make my land. I want to sell, a, you know, rent the space. If you give me the permit ahead of time, I'll be able to get a tenant. So I can, with my properties, come in and get permits in advance. I guess that's what I'm questioning. Is that what's happening here? Uh, not yet. Okay. That is but is that a precedent that, that, that is you a want question, to set? That is a question of mine and a concern of mine as yeah. to the process. I mean, believe me, <coughs> I would like to see, I'm a customer. Uh, uh, please direct it to the board. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm a customer. I would like to see pride there. I'd like to see a development there. It would increase problem, pro my property. But I've had to live with this for a long time. Okay. And I'm also concerned about the precedent. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes? Uh, Yes, no? Okay. So was, my concerns on this is twofold. One is, yes, we're setting a precedence for having issuing a permit before we have any substantial or even started the process with the planning board or anything else. Um, so as we enter into this, I'm really concerned about that. My second precedence, and I hope my family never hears I said this, is this will be our first convenience store in town, I believe, that sells beer and wine, am I correct? Mm -hmm. um, so our, our neighbors tend to have a little issue with that, and, and they don't do this very often. Um, we are a different community. Um, we don't have as many of the issues they have next door. So Which side are you talking about? <laughs> this this is going to be similar to the one you have in North Ham over on Damon Road. Is what you're talking about. Yes. So that that is another this is another precedent for the town of Hadley is to do this. Um, we are closer in Northampton to this synergy, which uh, actually we're going to talk about soon. Uh, we are closer to them, um, so that is something to take into account on whether we wish to do that. And we do have the ability to, to deny the permit for, based on that. Um, I'm not inclined to do that at this point. So um, those are the two, two things I see as, as issues for I, us. I'd like them to, to confront the uh, planning board with its plans and clean the property up and, and continue this conversation at another meeting. So my understanding, we possibly could take that course. We could say we will continue this. Your application is pending. We cannot issue out the license to someone else. We actually have two right now available. So the license is kind of held. We would have to resolve this issue before we issued it to somebody else. So you don't get, am I correct? Yeah, we, uh, we double checked our math today and found out that this is the last one. But, okay. Uh, uh, the, the application is pending, so nobody else could come in and ask for it. So that gives us, if we continue the hearing from tonight, you've heard everyone's concerns. Um, my, my only issue about knocking buildings down is I also understand that you need to get to the 
planning board and lock in your development and what your stormwater rules are going to be and your impacts from stormwater before you start knocking down and removing impervious surface. Um, so I understand that from that side. Well, we wouldn't be re removing any impervious. So, we would be increasing it. So, I didn't do that. Uh, so, um, my, my, uh, my take on this is that we've heard you, you've come, you've started the process, you've heard us, you've heard your neighbors, you've heard the town staff loud and clear. You know exactly what our concerns are and where you need to concentrate on to win us back as your friend. Um, so, if, if, I, if everyone's in agreement, I would say that we continue the hearing Fair enough. And let this process start moving forward in the planning board and in that realm, and then let you come back to us, and we'll go from there. Do you have a date? How much, with the how much time do you figure to clean up? A month or two? Yeah. I, I'm not so, like I said, I'm not so much worried things. about the buildings, but, but the growth is out of control. Yeah, I understand. I'm worried about the buildings more than the growth. I'm worried about our, so, our, our, our people going in there. Yeah. The, um, so, so um, we'll continue if that's what the board choo chooses, and um, we'll hold the license. And then you're that's you're fine. pending, and we have Fair to enough. resolve you before we condition anybody else. And then you just need to go to the planning board and start seeing some movement. And does he have a date? With Do you have a date with the planning board? Not yet. Okay. So you might want to. You know, as we say, you know, it'd be nice to know if we're going to get it to decide the site of the building and. And that determines parking spaces, and there's a lot. It's it's I all understand. connected. I understand. Yes. So we'll we'll go ahead with these plans, and we I, we hear what you're saying. Uh, we understand. Okay. In, I, in good faith, you do have my vote. If, if thank everything's you. Uh, um, and we're not up. we're not adjacent to stop and shop. We're across from the stop and shop, and our site's clean. So, so st stay on this yeah. site, please. Don't I understand, but, no, no, but no. we have clean sites. Okay. I just hey, want to go stay, and for that. Stay right. Okay. okay. So you know yeah. what we need to do? Got it. Um, so Thank you all. I've made a, a recommendation three times, but I didn't make a motion. Anybody want to make a motion? I think David want to say something first. Well, oh, I, I, think you, I think you have an informal meeting with the planning board on the 1st of we September. Did. The did. next select board meeting would be the 2nd of September. Is that too short of a time frame for the work that you need to do? I think we oh should. Oh no, we're ready to go before planning now. I, I think we should let planning have a little, a few meetings with them before we make a decision. Yeah. <coughs> I agree. Like, like you, they won't wrap it up in one so night. So if we want to just maybe put it in the 1st of October. 1st of October? Oh, That'll be fine. The first meeting in October is uh, the 7th. Before the town meeting. All right. So do I have uh, a motion? Second. I'm good. All right, so we have a motion and a second that we're going to continue the hearing. And all right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Kamaski. Again. Again. The other part that we were looking into, of course, was the cost-benefit analysis for having small water systems run our plant, let's say, for a year. The uh, cost for the new employees, the benefits, is estimated, as the board knows, as having from $116,550.36. Cost for small water system services is estimated to be at 259,172. I mentioned last week it was around 125. I forgot one major thing: mileage. Because I thought it was just like a regular uh, employee, but we have to pay mileage. So what we did is the hours times the base rate, the overtime rate, added the health costs, the life costs, insurance costs, Medicare costs, retirement costs, workers' comp costs to come up with our estimate for a town employee and also the uniforms. So again, the total is 116, 550, 36. Estimate for small water systems to provide coverage at the plants. 
for the weekdays, $80 an hour, six hours per day, five days a week, 52 weeks, 124, 800. Saturdays, 120 per hour, six hours times 52, 37, 1,440. Sundays, 160, which is uh, time.